Go to audible.com for your free audiobook download. You know, Scott. Yes, Randy Orton? I think that's I, I sorry, I, I waited for you to say more. I'm I'm a, such a keen listener cuz I love Audible so much, so I'm 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 keen to listen. Wait a minute. Audible makes you a good listener. Listener? Li- yeah. Uh, uh, Randy Orton Audible makes me a great listener. Scott, I <laughs> love listening. Do you? I <laughs> love listening. You listen. I <laughs> love sound. You tend to listen a lot while you speak. I love Well, Randy, the great part is you can get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. I (laughs) love it. Well, good, because it's free. You get a free audiobook. So there's over 100,000 titles to choose from. Over. Uh Uh-oh. Uh. Uh. Don't don't number (laughs) all. Yep. 100,000. I yep. oh. love it. <laughs> That's great. You can listen to them on the road with all your buddies. You can listen to it on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. Thanks, Curtain Jerks. <laughs> You're welcome, Randy. Thanks. <laughs> Jesus. Curtain Jerks. You're welcome. Curtain Jerks right here on the Comedy Podcast Network. I'm Scott Narver. And I'm Steve Sears. You just gave me a gun finger. I just want to let you know what's up. Oh, shit. You are dressed like a hobo today. Am I? <laughs> yes. I know. Look I know. You. I looked you... in the mirror before we started, and I was a little bit like, geez, you look... I look like I'm not even wearing a shirt underneath my pea coat. You look like you are a like an extra in Rocky around the fire barrel. Hey, how you doing? It looks like you're on hard times. Why don't you step around this barrel and have some beans? Then you can fight with your troubles. <laughs> I auditioned to be Mickey, but they didn't take me. Said I was too fucking crazy. Ah, that's bullshit. Look, I've got a cat that's eating a dog. <laughs> well, as you can tell, new listeners, we are a comedy wrestling podcast. Debatable. <laughs> Yeah, we we listen to uh, we listen. To, yeah, we listen to wrestling on the old radio tubes. Yeah, you know we we don't like watching it. We just like listening to wrestling. Oh man, what a what a crazy ass week, huh? Yeah, man, it's been my, what happened. What happened? Oh, that's right. The aftermath of at last Raw's aftermath of WrestleMania. That's right. Fandangoing is a term. I can't believe it. It's a term. You know what's funny is we were trying to come up with a fandango term, and what did we? What was like the things we do the fandango? Or yeah, do like, the fandango of fandang. Fando, fandango song. Fandang. Fandong. Fandang it. <laughs> fandang nabbit. Fandang nabbit. We didn't have a term. You know who did have a term? Who? Wrestling memes. Bless them. <laughs> oh, you hear that new pope? Bless him. Bless them. Bless wrestling memes. Our friends. God bless wrestling memes. That's a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> Our friends, uh, wrestling memes. Uh, find them on Facebook. Facebook.com slash wrestling memes. I've heard of them. <laughs> and well, we'll get to that. <laughs> and of course, uh, on Twitter, wrestling underscore memes. They have the best wrestling memes out there. Just flat out, bar none. All other wrestling memes are Mike Adamly. That, that's I. That's a reference that if I understood it, I'd give you one of these. Ha-ha! Well, it means the rest are dog shit and shouldn't be out there. Uh, but you know what? There's right. a, a little, it's good competition. Yeah, it's good competition. And it makes wrestling memes the cream that rises to the top. But when I want my wrestling memes, I go to wrestling memes. So they changed the world this last week. They changed the wrestling world. They they created the hashtag Fandango Revolution that we were sucking on their sparks. We we took a piece of that. Geez, sucking on their sparks. That's a new thing. That's, that's our, a t-shirt for you. Yeah, that's a t-shirt. That's why also that's why we got such black teeth. <laughs> yeah. Well, that and you're dressed like a hobo. Hey. <laughs> these well, are grapes that turned into raisins. I'm going to take a picture of you before we're done and put it on our Facebook page. Well, do it right now. Uh well, I'm, I got While the, you're recording. I don't know how to do it with the timer and all that. All it right. might it might wipe out all of time. Yeah, careful. We might short everything. 
Well, they so here's what happened. Wrestling memes uh, were were coming up with uh, memes throughout the New Jersey Raw, that crazy New Jersey Raw that happened. That the revolutionary remembers. Raw. Yes. Raw oh. that changed the world. Ch- Raw that changed the world, and then wrestling memes capitalized on that and then was pushing Fandango hard amongst – they're in the U.K., so it was this – it was this – just tidal wave of fandangoing. So here's some of the things that happened. I can't even report it all because there's so much that they did. They uh, they got the theme song of Fandango, which is called. Do you know the name of the theme song? I dream of genie. Uh, pretty much it's the I dream of genie theme song. <laughs> cha cha la la. Cha cha la la. Cha cha la la. Cha cha la 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 cha la <laughs> cha la tra la la. Exactly. Tra-la-la. So. La-la. La, Wrestling la, la, la. memes uh, got so much support for this song. It was played on local radio. It was played at football grounds, which are soccer games, all you Americans. I think we call them fields. Yeah, well, that too. Fields fields of foots. Yeah. Uh, in clubs. On uh, BBC UK radio indie chart, it was number nine and beat out Harlem Shake. That's good. Yeah, I don't care for Harlem Shake. I care for Cha Cha La La. <laughs> I care a lot. Um, it, and then even WWE Universe tweeted. This is the WWE. They tweeted, it's official. Hashtag Fandangoing has dethroned the Harlem Shake. And they put up a picture of, of the chart and then put in parentheses, thanks wrestling memes. Hashtag Cha Cha La La. What a shout out by the man. Yeah, they wouldn't do it on Raw. They didn't do it officially, but like all that stuff that Cole and uh, JBL talk about when they're Fandango's, referencing the wrestling memes. Yeah, it, that's that's wrestling memes work, and I believe it also reached number two on iTunes in the UK. I don't remember what it reached here in the US, but it just it was huge. This is phenomenal. This is a really exciting time because of how much effort—not effort, but just the ability there is to change policy policy i don't know which policy we're going to change all right well here's the policy we have in place we're going to have dancing wrestlers all right we're going to have 42 dancing wrestlers in this year wwe none of them can get past a mid card yeah leave think about that also the best part about it was wwe then addressing it and then sort of having jerry lawler it's like having your dad introduce like hey guys got a board with a couple of wheels on it you're skating it up and having a little bit of the fun boarding around town well guys we've got one of those too and bring along the 14 year old girls so that way we can talk about it you know have a little spin the bottle got action a little bit of pep going in your step <laughs> hey let's cha cha all of these girls huh who's got a camera yeah who's got one i'm the king of memphis don't touch me don't touch me um so, so much, so, so much uh, has happened, all, all these things, and they've even have a shirt. The, before WWE even has a Fandango shirt, they have a shirt. The Monday Night Fever Fandango shirt is available for pre-orders at www.squaredcircle.biz. They have a UK store and they have a US store. Uh, the pre-orders are available there. You can also like them on Facebook, search Squared Circle Ringwear. I'm ordering a T-shirt. Have you seen this T-shirt yet? I'd like to see this T-shirt. All right, a vamp a little bit while I, while I bring it up. Da 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 da. Waiting for Scott to show me this T-shirt. T-shirt hurt. Mention our videos while I'm doing this. We've got uh, videos on YouTube. Boob slash curtain jerks. The uh, curtain do you, jerks. Do you know our? Cur- do you even know it? I'm having a stroke. Uh, YouTube.com <laughs> slash curtain jerks podcast. We made our own uh, Fandango videos. And those are the ones I want to take off. I want to see people singing a song, not just pointing to two different gods in the sky. I'm conflicted. I don't know what to believe in. Believe in. Oh, that's an awesome fucking shirt. It is an awesome fucking it's shirt. It's the Fandango outline, and it's the it's the Saturday Night Fever font. So yeah. I've just described it to people who can't see. And within Fandango's outline... Are those all- mazes? What? Is that a big maze? Yeah. It's is a it big, chicken wire? It's a big maze filled with chicken wire. And also the words... Uh, da 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 da. Oh, oh within wow. it, ra ra ra, da da da. It's super cool. I love this shirt. I am definitely buying the shirt, and we'll be posting a video of it once once it arrives. It's it's a super super cool shirt. I suggest you get one. I'm getting one, 
And on a related note, because also, those... guys, they're not going to have a shirt that's nearly as cool as this when they do start swilling as merchandise. True. There's no way they're going to match up to this. They've already blown. They've already blown it. It's going to be a white T-shirt with uh, like his his hair that flops over the swoop on no the face on the collar. Yeah, and it'll be like real hair that just flops down. It's like this is my Fandango shirt. I'm... Look, I look like Fandango. You don't want to look like the person. You want to have something that's iconic and symbolic of the person. But what happens when they wear that shirt, but you are kind of looking like the person? Uh, it's a paradox. Oh, my God. They dance inside themselves. <laughs> well, on a related note of all of this, w- w- with wrestling memes, this is even crazier to me. This is, uh, this is the thing for us. This is a, this is a benchmark, uh, landmark benchmark, uh, marking M- Mark Wahlberg. Where's this bench? Yeah, Mark Wahlberg wears a bench, and we did it. We wear Mark Wahlberg in this land. Ted, it's a pretty good move. Yeah. So here's what happened for us. There is a new podcast out there called Botch Amemia on iTunes. The pilot episode is available. This is Botchamania. We all know Botchamania. We watch it all the time. It's hilarious. This is a YouTube show. Uh, and wrestling memes. It's a website. They've got the best wrestling memes out there. These two mega powers it's a radio show coexist and they for the pilot episode it's their first conversation ever together talking on skype these two englanders they're both english that's crazy uh and they feature the language we speak (laughs) yes we we took it from them (laughs) and we refined it (laughs) yes sirree we made this language perfect yeah we sure did there goes bubba ray dudley kick him in his dick um they featured us. They featured curtain jerks on Botchamania. I'm very proud of this. When you told me about this, I was very excited, Scott. I've listened to the episode. I love it. These guys are very entertaining, very fun to hear their insight and, and what has happened amongst them and their, their shared stories. And then in the middle of all that is one of our uh, is one of our bits. It's super cool. I'm I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So if you check out Botch and Mimeo on iTunes, listen to it there. Then please tweet these guys. Let them know that you heard Curtain Jerks on there and that you enjoyed it. So tweet uh, wrestling underscore memes and Matthew Gregg. That's M-A-F-F-E-W-G-R-E-G-G. Matthew Gregg. And that's the Botch Mimeo guy. I heard Curtain Jerks on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Have them back again. Hashtag. Hashtag Fandango Revolution. Hashtag, hashtag. So that's huge. That's that's We had to just lead with that because that's how monumental this past week has been. That is fantastic, Scott. I, I'm i I'm thrilled, you know? You know, it was hey, also— Hey, Scott, you are sweating bullets of joy. I am. It's Well, it's the only bullets I, I, I use. That's good. You load your gun with hope. <laughs> what a terrible slogan for anti-gun laws. <laughs> I don't know. That's like that could be pro or con. I think. Why don't we just make T-shirts that people can use for whatever uh, side they want? It's like you can have a shirt that says Brock Lesnar, and then you can do smiley face on un- unsmiley face, and then another shirt that says shoot queers. <laughs> Feels like that message is pretty clear. I don't think it, that takes too much interpretation. Well, those that's for the ECW fans out there. Oh, okay. Man, they are so hardcore. <laughs> you know, speaking of hardcore. We just finished. Uh, you, you were watching Impact Wrestling while we we're having some lunch. Yeah, that's what. That's that's. A, it's a good digestif. Oh, it helps. It helps uh, move the food through you. Yeah. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have said it like that. What's always? It always gets a bad rap. It gets an unfair rap of being such a terrible show. Who are these people, Scott? Scott, who are these people? Who just, just a- like Impact? Just angry internet people. Move over. Scoot over. Let me in here. Move. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Smooth. Hey, Give me that microphone. Here, have it. Thanks. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, or? I'm a wrestling super fan. Oh, all right. Uh, well, you appear to be wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, but it's it's not it's a it's a uh Dan it's not a Daniel Bryan t-shirt. No, it's, it's a Brian, not a Daniel Bryan it's shirt. A Brian, He's a sellout. It's a Brian Daniels. Danielson. Yeah, that's the real rest. That's who he was okay. before he sold out and became a hollow husk of a man hiding behind that beard. Jeez, oh. I just wrestling. I just don't like what WWE's doing right now. You appear to also be wearing Ultimo Dragon boots. Yeah, I wear these all the time. I don't even lace them. My legs are too big. <laughs> And I'm not. Look at me. I'm not a big guy. I'm really tall. Uh, yeah, you're really tall. You're you're a big guy though. You're yeah. I'm you're bigger. Big me. personality. Well, sure. And that hat. 
That's a yeah. It is. That's it. Well, I wanted to point it out for wrestling fans because it's an it's an unusual hat. Yeah, it's an ICP jester hat because <laughs> I like wrestling promotions that deal with real issues like wrestling and none of that drama soap opera stuff. So ICP deals with real drama for you. You got it. <laughs> well, um, look, you you clearly. Would you like some popcorn out of this cone? <laughs> Yeah, I would, actually. Don't eat it. It's a sellout. It's oh. bad popcorn. Well, look, you seem to be upset about everything that's going on. Yeah, I can't even get any service in here so my mom could pick me up. This isn't a... Oh, okay. I thought you meant, like, f- food or table service. No, there certainly isn't any service, either. You know where I can get a program? This isn't a... Th- this is a show that you hear later. We're not catering to a live audience. We tried We'd that way once, better if you those guys, two guys were super weird. It'd be way better if you guys had programs for your show. I can't believe a show that doesn't have programs. Well, look, sorry. We don't have programs. And if you need to have your mom pick you up, I'm sure we could we could uh, arrange something. What, are you, you. going to call her on your landline? God, you're such a sellout, man. Wrestling used to be so great. What's wrong with wrestling now? What's it the problem? It used to be real to me. Blah, blah, blah. Wine, wine, wine. <laughs> I'm crying. I was conceived in a Holiday Inn. <laughs> okay. Well. That's, that's tough living. <laughs> wrestling speaks to me because I'm deformed. Well, what do you like Not better? physically, just in my heart and stuff. <laughs> what do you like better, WWE or TNA? God, she's so tough. I mean, TNA's got better in-ring workers, but I don't like what Hogan's doing. He's just trying to make another WCW. And then WWE's got the big stars, but why are they letting these part-timers come back to main event just keeping down all the mid-carters? That's the only way they can build a proper environment and economy for the wrestlers so they have a long-term plan and they never do any follow-through in their stories. Well, look, I'm I'm sorry that you're so upset about all this. I, I don't know if there's... You mind gonna... if I jack off right now? <laughs> yeah, I do. Please don't jack off in here. Fine. I just need to find a place to do that today because that's like the only joy I have in my life because wrestling's so terrible. Uh, well, hey, you could jack off in your mom's car. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sure she would. Shut up. <laughs> oh, all right. I didn't know if you knew what sarcasm was. Well, anyway, I got lost. I was looking for the mall. Uh, th- the mall is quite a ways away is from it? here. Is it? Yeah. Geez, well, maybe I could get a ride. What are you going to go do at the mall? Look for a hot topic and see if anybody's signing. <laughs> Who do you want? Who Whose autograph do you want? Mickey James. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Thanks. God, he was bitter. I don't know why those people just burst into our studio like that. We shouldn't have the doors open. I, I, feel, I thought we had an open door policy. We do, but that doesn't mean we actually have to keep the doors open. We don't literally have to keep the doors no. open. No. All right. Ed, well, I mean, it, it's... Ed, well, anyway, Impact does get a bad rap, doesn't it? It gets a very bad rap. I'm always a uh, little, uh, what do you call them, boards? I don't know. I'm on a Facebook thing the where I got to The message boards. Yeah, message boards Jesus. and shit like that. Sometimes you feel like you're aging by the second. Oh, yeah. I feel like I just, like, when you said boards, I was like, oh, yeah, man, are, that's, like, plywood? I swear to God, I imagine people <laughs> riding on wood. I feel like a, just a total ancient old man. Well, I I don't think it gets such a bad rap. I always think that those people who badmouth Impact as much as they do don't watch the show. Yeah, well, they're out of the Impact Zone. We've talked about this. Now that they're touring, yeah. the crowds go crazy. Hogan comes out and people chant his name because in Florida, uh, the rest of the United States, people aren't sick of Hogan. In yeah, Florida, like, I imagine oh, it's like— there's our mayor. Yeah, there's the mayor of Florida. Hulk there's Hogan. our orange mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> It was a really close race between the orange flavored Kool Aid Man and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 an exciting show. There's plenty of interesting characters on there. There's cool matches because unlike WWE, I feel that they give they give enough gravity to both sets of guys in a match the majority of the time that you don't know who's gonna win. That yeah, it could I go like either that way. Feeling. It's not just a uh, here's one guy that comes out and the other guy didn't have his entrance, so that guy loses. I think also there's something cool about not knowing the politics, like feeling like I know a little bit less about the politics where it's like this guy's got to win so they can build up the pay-per-view for blah, blah, blah versus yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I feel like it and they dropped a bunch of their pay-per-views. Yeah. So it's I think it's like four a year. And so uh, they're more exciting. And I'd be uh, more prone to order more because you're no you're not feeling stretched or put over a pay-per-view barrel and then just forcefully entered by a pay-per-view popcorn cone but there, there's no you know every so often that sounds all right yeah if you're if you're with if you're with a pay-per-view you really care about 
and that's that pay per view is you know, respectful and safe. Then sometimes I think, it can just be a, a pay per view of a one night stand. Yeah, but if it, I feel like if you have a good but rep- annually, so that way you have some consistency in your life. <laughs> yeah, but if it's annually, but you want to have a pay per view that you care about and that you trust immediately. If you just have that pay per view rapport right and off the bat, if it gets bat, a little extreme, if there's some blood, hey, that's all right. Yeah, but at least this pay per view cares. You know, they're probably gonna tell you. If they don't tell you, that's a pay per view that doesn't care. Yeah. If a pay per view tells you there's gonna be blood, then it's like, hey, thanks. I was looking forward to that. God damn, I'm lonely. <laughs> hey. Huh? Shower yourself with the podcast, man. Just wrap yourself up in the podcast. <laughs> just rub an iPod over me. Yeah, just just really drink it up. Well, you got bummed sometimes uh, when we were watching Impact. Oh, uh, man, that was like a one-two punch. That was really rough. Uh, Scrap Iron Adam Pierce wasn't allowed to do the gut check. He he didn't even get to cut a promo. Yeah, Which that, is the craziest thing. They gave the 30 seconds to that guy Magno when they said no the first time. They should have given Strap Iron Adam Pierce 15 seconds when they said you don't get to do gut check. It's like asking Dean Malenko to come and uh, hey, like will you do this make hardcore a, match? Make a cake for you. <laughs> it's like, would uh, you like him to wrestle technically? He's really good at it. No, 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 no. Uh, I want to see what kind of cooking he can do. And they had Magno speak. He has braces. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with having braces. There's just something about not having any sort of gravitas or presence. And That's being 13 years old. God, man, that really was a bummer. One, because it wasn't scrap iron. And two, because he was like, this is my dream. <laughs> and everything I've ever wanted is right here in this ring with me. And it was like, yeah. The, I, how did you let this guy get The outfit your so mom far? made you. And uh, Hey, hey, hey. She worked real. She's a nice lady. She worked really <laughs> hard on that. And I mean, you know what? Awesome for him that he got so far, but Scrap Iron got that far 17 times once a year. Ugh. Like, he's been doing it. Fan- he's been doing awesome, and he would have been a huge force to be reckoned with. I really hope this is part of a bigger storyline like a I Joey thought, Ryan. Yeah, I thought Scrap Iron was going to come out and ruin Magno. Magno? Magno. There's a Magnus and a Magno. Yeah, but thankfully, they, they said, consider? Mag, no thank you. Mag, Fuck off. no thank you. Which was nice to see them reject someone, but when they actually did that, it seemed weird. It's like, all right, we are limited. There's this you. guy who's totally worth it, and we're gonna take this other guy and say no to both of you. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least everyone's not joining the roster and then not being on television. I don't know, Scott. I just it got me really bummed. You do seem really bummed. Well, you know what? You know what I think it is. No, because it's your brain. I know. I think I miss MMA Jeff Jarrett. You miss MMA Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, I remember MMA Jeff Jarrett. I do. He was um, he had the uh, spiky hair. Mm-hmm. He had the trunks. He had the gloves. He had the gloves. Did he? Do, did he wrapped his feet too? Right. He didn't do the wrestler shoes. I thought he did barefoot and he wrapped them like kickboxer style. Yeah, maybe he did. I don't remember. And then he had the MMA challenge, and he had all the MMA mm-hmm. guys, and he fought kids. Uh, did he fight children? Like he had the segments where he would go to gyms and stuff, and I I think he fought uh, kids. God, that was so awesome. I miss him. What's he doing? I, we could call him. Can we? Well, yeah, we have this huge Rolodex of guys that we don't <laughs> we don't actually have uh, come on the show. We could, but we can call him up. Here, I've got Ma Jeff Jarrett. Do you think that's him? I think Ma. that is him. Okay, I'm calling. I'm gonna call. Jeff. Right, I'm gonna call, call him. I'm gonna call. We're gonna MMA call Jeff up Jarrett. MMA I'm Jeff, Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. It's ringing. Woohoo! Hey, how are you doing, y'all? Jeff Jarrett. That's J E double F J A double R E double T. Double M A. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, hi, uh, it's uh, Steve Sears and Scott Narver from Curtain Jerk. Steve Sears and Scott Narver, Jeff Jarrett's here. Woo! <laughs> wow, uh, God, I'm in a, Scott, I'm in a better mood already. This is great. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, I just want to start off by saying, I miss you, man. Where where have you been? Where have you been all this time? Hey, man, I've been real busy, you know, just being with, uh, I don't know if you know this, Kurt Angle's wife? Kurt Jarrett's wife, now. <laughs> Yeah, I did know that. I feel like Karen Jarrett. Every time I talk to you, it seems that you're either talking about her or you're tweeting at her, or you're just bringing her up all yeah, the time. Yeah, cause she's mine now. Jesus, she's the new championship in my life, uh, and I ain't gonna lose her to nobody. I but you did lose a match, and you were exiled to Mexico. I think if I remember your Wikipedia page right. That's not a punishment. That's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. What? You won't live in Mexico for the rest of your life? Well, I don't know, man. M E double X I. C double O Mexico. <laughs> uh, well, man, I just I a lot of interesting things have been going on in wrestling. I'd love to get your Name thoughts em. on. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Bully Ray was revealed as the leader A-B-U-L-L-Y-R-E. of Ace. U double L Y double R 
A-Y. Bully Ray. I, would that double R be a roll of the R? I ain't no Spanish. What? I ain't no Spanish. <laughs> yeah, but you live in Mexico, right? No, I don't. I was banished, man. You were banished. I'm, I'm, I live in Memphis. Oh, so you were banished from Mexico. Yeah, I'm banished from Mexico, man. Man, that's got to be rough being uh, exiled to the United States and then banished from Mexico. No way, man. They got Chipotle's here. Everything's covered. Well, geez, so you're, you were exiled to Mexico and then banished from Mexico to the United States. That's right. With uh, Karen Jarrett. Yeah. What a way to be banished, huh? Yeah, I guess. Man, that's great. Um, well... Yeah, Bully Ray married Brooke Hoga, and then it was revealed that he's the leader of Aces and Eights. Oh, yeah, man, I know. I made Aces and Eights. What? I made it. You you came up with the... I, I made it. I wrote it. You wrote Aces and Eights. Yeah, I wrote it on the back of a guitar. Oh, okay. That's G-U-I-T-A-R. Guitar! <laughs> well, also, uh, I believe... Um, uh, geez, who's that tall guy? Uh, the one with the... Greg Colley! No, the... <laughs> yeah, Greg Colley. No, I uh, he's uh, isn't he with um, what's his name the little short guy Hornswoggle? Yeah, Natalia Nightheart. Natalia Nightheart. Yeah. Does but she can wrestle. Why? What's that's she a guy. Is it? Yeah. What's she doing with the Great Khali and Hornswoggle? What do you mean she? That's a fella, man. Is it? Yeah. Did you write that? What are you talking about? I hit that shit. What? That's a but that's a guy. You just said that's a guy. It don't matter. I was in Mexico. What are you gonna do about it? I apparently have sex with a man. Yeah, at times. Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, WrestleMania 29 just happened in uh Yeah, New- Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. He used my move. Kimura. That's K double I M U R double A. Kimura. <laughs> so, uh, so I take it you watched WrestleMania 29. Sure did, man. Watch uh, banging my wife. <laughs> you were you were four ha- hours. I used Sting Tantric Six. You like Sting uh, Joker Sting or yeah, st- yeah. No, not the musician man. Not the guy from the no police. No way. Sting's a great lover, man. He showed me how to make sweet, sweet love to Karen Jerry. I do. I want to even ask how. Yeah. How? With my B A double L S. My balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I th- thank you, Jeff. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. You want to come uh, over? What? Where are you? Memphis, man. Uh, uh geez, you have I, some moon pies and some RC. Moon pies, yeah, I'd love it. I just, I gotta record this. I got some stuff I gotta do in Los Angeles. M double O N P I double E S. Moon pies. <laughs> well, you know what, Jeff? I, you've really, uh, Jeff Jarrett, you really raised my spirits. I really appreciate that. That'll be four five dollars. What? Hey, I'm a wrestler, man. I need to get paid. Hold on. Did I just dial a nine hundred number? Yeah, man. Take your pants off. Uh, me? Take them off. All right, I'm disconnecting this. But you still got to pay. Jeez, Scott, that one. I had no idea I was dialing a 900 number he, that entire he, time. He charged us 45 bucks. Did he? Well, it's, it's going to show up in our bill. Good thing it's not a landline. Good thing. So, yeah, Impact was fun. Raw was, uh, people were complaining about Raw. So people, they're just so upset. Well, I think the week. other thing is after Raw, like after that, Revolutionary Raw after WrestleMania. How are you supposed to like? That's lightning in a bottle. Yes. How can you capture something like that twice? How I, can you have ma- once in a lifetime twice? It, it's uh, unheard of. It's how do you do that? I don't know. How do you book WrestleMania a year in advance? How do <laughs> you have a Raw after WrestleMania that's super exciting that has a great debut? How do you do that? I I don't know. Let me ask you this: What did you think about Kofi Kingston beating? Uh, what's and his Cesaro? Name? Yeah, Antonio Cesaro for the U.S. title on Raw. I did not see the match. However, okay, I'm very excited about it. You're excited? Yeah. You know what Kofi Kingston said? What did he say? He said, "I'm I've uh finally I brought the title back home. Oh, to the United States. But he's from Jamaica slash South a- West, West Africa, Africa slash Southwest Africa. That's uh, that's all the Santa Fe fixins." Santa Fe fixins? Yeah, like chutneys and bell peppers and <laughs> Southwest Africa. <laughs> I see. Uh, I just watched District 9 last night. It's really good. For the first time? Second time. Third time. Oh, all right. Yeah. Second, third time. Second, Se- third second time. and third time. That's. Uh, I just want to – I don't want to get too off topic. Kofi Kingston, U.S. title, Antonio Cesaro. But uh, District 9 is one of those movies I think people should revisit every couple – like maybe once or twice a year. It gets better each time. Once or twice a year? I think so. All right. I mean, how often do you rewatch a movie? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, because I know... Are we talking Requiem for a Dream? Yeah, how often do you watch Requiem for a Dream? Every night I go to bed. I see. I close my eyes, I see that movie. I can't go to sleep until I hear ass to ass. It's like a lullaby. Or, 
uh, Maid Marian. <laughs> I didn't let, I didn't pull it out for air. <laughs> exactly. Uh, fair enough. Uh, this was you straight off topic, so. Uh, no, I know, I know. I was just, I was really, uh, you threw me for a loop for watching Requiem for a Dream more than once in a lifetime. Yeah, I every night before I go to bed. Jeez, that is so rough, man. Why? I, it's, a, it's a jarring movie. How so? Oh, the ass-to-ass -ass part <laughs> and all the hallucinogenic uh, imagery and the uh, the subject matter. Yeah, I don't look That being said, District 9 is probably pretty jarring also. <laughs> a lot of people die. Yeah, they're bugs. Ew. <laughs> Ew, bugs. Um, well, so what Antonio Cesaro, Kofi, a lot of people are upset. I think it, you need to have it settle a little bit before you make judgment on it. Well, I mean, I haven't, like, I'd love to see what his reign is going to do, if it helps take him to another place or if it makes him sort of exciting. I mean, there was, someone was talking on, he answered via Twitter. He said a lot of people want him to go heal, and he said he's the kind of guy who would be willing to try anything. And, like, I think he'd be a great ass heel. to ass? Try what if Kofi Kingston went ass to ass? With who? Oh, God, anybody. Like, all of his opponents. That's his new finishing move. I, I guess it's a heel move if the other person isn't into it. I mean, that's <laughs> totally. I, in fact, I don't think that's, a that's not move. just a heel move. That would be that would be rape. That would be sexual assault. It, okay, it's a submission move, all right? Here you go. Because and That's like the figure said, four leg lock. Like You really are running the risk of having the person <laughs> turn it over and turn it against you. Kofi says, the only boom you're going to hear is when we go ass to ass. Boom. 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 The third boom really <laughs> makes my butthole clinch. <laughs> it really is pretty terrifying. See? He could put he could make Brock Lesnar shake in his boots. See, I know there was a reason I went on that horrible tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. <laughs> um Or they just kill a bunch of bugs. <laughs> I think it's time that we go to jerk tweets every week. Go to twitter.com. I also assume that if anybody was ever listening to this, this was the one time they were like, oh, man, you got to hear this podcast. It's so funny. <laughs> and then it's the Kofi Kingston ass to ass story. There goes that interview opportunity. Well, just wait till the, that shows up on TV, huh? And we're like, oh, look what they took. Look what they took. They took our idea of Kofi Kingston going ass to ass. So instead of da da. Da 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 da! It's ow 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 ow. Exactly. A little bit of The Simpsons. Yes. Ever we go to Twitter.com/slash Curtain Jerks and send your hashtag Jerk Tweets. We answer them right on the show. Uh, questions, comments. Starting right now. Queen City Psycho says favorite random chant from last week's Raw. So many to pick from. Brian Kendrick Fandango theme. Best crowd ever. That's pretty rad. Uh, we had really gone over. Someone said DDP at one point. DDP, yeah. Um, Mike Kyoto was exceptionally good that they were chanting for the ref over the two wrestlers. Yeah. That one was really neat. But the the sheer magnitude of 25,000 people agreeing to sing a wrestling theme song together. That was pretty great. That blows me away. That that one really does blow me away. As, as fun as it is, if you, get on a, if you get on a roll of chanting out wrestler names and then it's like – Whoever thinks of the next one, but to get the whole crowd to do it, that's very impressive. But the song, the song was even more impressive. I think uh, I'm going to go a little bit more pedestrian than that. Ooh. I think One More Chair was probably my favorite. That's Where a good the, one. The too. crowd was really adamant. It wasn't just this is stupid. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't a criticism like saying this sucks or ECW or holy shit. It was an actual demand. Like, it was sort of like when you call out someone's name and you want Stone Cold to appear or something like that. Even clearer than that was, David! <laughs> <laughs> Throw that chair. Because at... you want David to come out and then Stone Cold to come out and stun David. Yeah. Who's David? Fuck David. Oh, just a guy? <laughs> yeah, just a guy. <laughs> Where's David from catering? <laughs> Send him out. Where's David from catering? Send him out. Squash. Um, I think the one more chair part was sort of what I thought was the most interesting because I, as a viewer, wanted Big Show to throw that chair and try to get it into the ring. But mm -hmm. we had talked about this. Big Show is such a professional that he wouldn't be swayed by the crowd, and he didn't do that third one. Yeah. And we were talking about how uh, – what. so what could have been interesting was Big Show could have some, got, even got – like this is so weird trying to tell him how he could have done his business. <laughs> but these are the things <laughs> that I – he could have done your business. I was thinking better, about what would have pissed me off was if he had pretended to throw that third chair – 
the crowd would have gone fucking crazy. They'd mm-hmm. be like, oh, we're affecting them. We're changing things. And then he could have just like, yeah, as you said, he could have just put it down and sat down it. Like, is this what like, you want? Time to do my taxes. Yeah. No. <laughs> and Throw it. This is sort of what happens with the Fandango thing. He comes back now a week later and he's like, he's got all this, all this tremendous support. People are crazy about him. And they're like, yeah, just go out there and just really don't ride it at all. You know, just let that wave wash over. Really be in the middle. Yeah, really don't make it decisive either way. It's like, oh, play to them a little bit. Have them say your name and then say they're not cool enough and then slowly walk away. There was no clash. There was no spark. There's gasoline everywhere. No, no I reject you. No, I embrace you, which makes me hate you. Like, no, it wasn't a strong point of view from him. Which So the crowd, know, yeah. that's not his choice. Like, he's getting told what to do. Um, but it, which he's been told to be slow and boring. Like his entrance theme was longer than it was at WrestleMania. I swear. I on that last night on Raw, I watched it and it felt longer than the even the dance sequence they did. Mm-hmm. He came out so slow. Jerry Lawler gave him a half, like it, not like a half-ass introduction, but it was like, this is how we like we don't know how to deal with this, so we're going to just talk about it. Which is very adult and great for conflicts and, you know, uh, conflicts in war-torn areas. You can That's what the UN is great at. <laughs> but for wrestling, it's like, nope, set a fire right now. Make this explode. Like, do something weird or crazy. And people, if it, they could have done anything but what they did. Yeah, it, it was a disappointing choice. He could have did. bit the head off of a live chicken. And everyone would have like their eyeballs, their eyebrows would have jumped off their head. Like, people would have been like, this is so ridiculous. What's going to happen? My now? eyebrows are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I need those so people know if I'm angry or sad. Chris Bickley 5 says, what are your top five best looking championship belts? Can be from any pro wrestling company. And also he says, loving the Fandangoing videos. Keep them up. Uh, keep them coming because Fandangoing will be in full effect next week when WWE comes to the UK. Ooh, good. So they're going to be there. And we, uh, I'll say it again, youtube.com slash curtain jerks podcast. We've been making our uh, Fandango theme videos. I, so check I those encourage out. everyone to make new ones also because yeah. I realize half Check ours out. Yeah. And we'll make a playlist. We'll put together a playlist of all your guys. And in the Walking Dead one, see to try to figure out where I forget what to say. That's a good <laughs> one. Like literally see me blank and not knowing anything about it. But like, try make your own. It's yeah. it's good to sing along. That way, you're not just doing the two fingers in the air. Yeah, yeah. Be different. That's a weird. If be different do and do it like us. Yeah, <laughs> do be different, but do exactly what we're telling you to do. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll keep those videos coming. Uh, thank you, Chris Bickley Five, for enjoying them. But uh, f- uh top and enjoy five. if you get a chance to go to a live show. Enjoy. Let us know about that also. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to hear about that too. Um, not that the UK is a super small place and everybody's gonna go to the same community center, but, <laughs> geez, I really feel like I'm backpedaling now. <laughs> Cheeps, cheeps, ball you cheeps. Um, <laughs> that's what they sell in the crowd, right? Yeah. They don't sell nachos. Well, our next video should be us in other places not understanding <laughs> customer culture. That's what I do. Top five best looking championship belts. All right. Let's do a five collective here. I like that old school one from uh, when the the older one. the like the, Oh, the like, old belt. The, the circle one. Oh, know? the old circle belt. The old, not the not Hogan's one, but the one that I first. You know, everybody, the old circle belt. Uh, when Rock and Stone Cold went at, at it at WrestleMania. Which one? They did it. They the first time, okay. and that was the same belt for a long time before they changed it. Okay, so you like the the, I think what's referred to as the Attitude. I like belt. the Attitude Era belt. Stone Cold had it has like the little wings on top and it has the globe because Stone Cold cut his chin on it. Mm-hmm. One time. I think okay. that one's badass. That one is very cool. I agree with you on that one. That is that is a great belt. Go another one here. Uh, the undisputed championship. Oh, that one's fantastic. That thing's a platter. It's huge. Yeah, it's I awesome. Like that one a lot. Uh, that one was very reminiscent to the WCW heavyweight belt, right? Like the WCW heavyweight belt. That's a big old dinner plate. That Yeah, they made a big— I, I didn't like that one for a very long time. But the undisputed one was a, of a similar design, right? It's it's stretched out more. It's more uh, rectangular. It's Yeah, it's wider, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick—I'll I'll pull it up as you uh, think of another. Well, the un, you know what's funny is that the undisputed one, while now no longer sort of in play— still holds a lot of weight in my mind it's it was he did they did uh combine two titles you know there you go which one this one it's it's, yeah it's pretty much 
these. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like when you when I see these belts, the undisputed one still seems like why aren't they doing like they're not at the top of the mountain. They're still like they're trying to make they're trying to give prestige to this new one, which looks admittedly cool, but it looks like a wristwatch. Yeah. Then it, yeah, I might go with that. Wristwatchian. It's funny like it was funny when they went with Cena's belt for so long when the belt before it was great and everybody it had the prestige it's like why try to give it to something new and oh well i just guess i just sort of described a metaphor for not pushing anyone (laughs) why give it to something new that's untested and give it any sort of prestige or importance um i liked the the wcw us title uh that one did that have the red white and blue on it uh no here uh, let me pull this that was before they redesigned it for smackdown right Yes, uh, there's just something about it. Like, I I don't know. I that one just it seemed a little bit different enough. It, it looked very prestigious. I liked it when Lance Storm had it a lot. Like I it just looked like a solid, like a championship you'd really want to win and be proud of. Uh, the Hardcore Championship. Ooh, it was trashy, but it was it had a nice place in my heart. <laughs> I have a I have a Hardcore Championship hole in my heart right now, and of course. Number five, which is number one, the Million Dollar Championship. That's a great belt. There's nothing – like, that's the best fucking belt it out there. It just looks awesome. It's super cool. Like that That's a belt where it's like you want every guy to get it, but then you realize Ted, DiB- Ted DiBiase Jr. got it, and you're like, oh, God, it's worthless now. You know what? Let's get a picture of uh, Mark Rozeka's belt, the one that – Mark Rozeka uh, – uh, oh, from Reno 911? Yeah, founding member of member of Curtain Jerks. Uh, he has a belt that on his wall that he made for his... Uh, Somebody made for him. Yeah, but it was for his the back star, the back star, the <laughs> backyard wrestling that he did when he was growing up, I thought, right? When he was growing up? I thought he somebody made a belt for him and it has... For Re- when he was on Reno 911. Oh, was it? Yeah, Mark was on... Uh, he taped one day but they had two segments on two different episodes of reno 911 backyard where wrestling. he was a backyard wrestling champion and he fought <laughs> kids like he fought little kid neighborhood kids but he's a big dude you know he's yeah he's like a, 20 you know 25 30 years old at the time and a bigger guy and he's the champion he looks like colt cabana he's like colt yeah. cabana size and this belt has an aluminum foil eagle that's mm-hmm. awesome and then uh they have a a, like letters cut out of soda cans to say champion on it. It's very cool. It's a super cool belt. We'll we'll have to see if we can get a, a photo of it. It's in a very prestigious case with a lot of security. The garage because his girlfriend won't <laughs> let him have it in the house. He has a garage. Yeah, it's nice. It's where he keeps beers. <laughs> Jay Westwood eighty six says, kind of worrying that after the fandangoing videos, I want to grow Steve Sears facial hair. Hashtag tempting. Uh, I think I responded to that. Did you? Yeah. I th- uh, God, I hope I did. I thought I, I – more unless I was just thinking about responding to it and I didn't. That no, that re- never happens. That's really – that would be really disappointing. Uh, do it. Let me say this right now. Grow out your facial hair because then you find out who your real friends are. <laughs> and it's your facial hair. That's who your real friends are. So there you go, Jay Westwood uh, endorsing uh, – I did it. I did say that. Hey, wait. I go. literally – yeah, I said that. Uh, we got a new one here from Quid Pro Quo Joe says, is it just me or does the Fandango theme song sound almost identical to the theme of I Dream of Genie? Oh, oh, shit. Two minds thinking alike. I think so. I think so, especially when we sing it, that it, yeah, it really I, uh, boils down to the, it. Uh, I think it's just us missing I Dream of Genie. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it does have a lot of that in there which is good because that's a very familiar tune so it's catchy i remember it because i dream of genie is a very sexy show in concept i never really watched it yeah it's not very good but if you think about it having this super sexy blonde who can have magical powers and she's in love with you it's pretty cool the boring so dumb <laughs> wrestling please <laughs> um valbert 87 says do you guys think that jack swagger just wants a thank you from ziggler uh, gosh, Scott, I think I'm going to have to think about <laughs> What's that. You're thinking about it? For what? For what? For beating up Del Rio? Uh, yeah. He beat him up big time and then made him, he, he served him on a big old uh, championship platter. 
A pig old undisputed bladder. Yeah. He uh, practically broke that ankle in twain. If it had been a private thank you, so that Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger were both out of the title picture, I would say yes. So, oh, you mean like on WWE Active? Oh, like they've been relegated there? Oh, that's a private thank you. Oh, like, hey, just want to say thanks for letting me, you know, cash in after your match. Yeah. And then he does that hair thing. Yeah. Do you think that's what he wanted? I think he wants that belt, Scott. I re- really? Yeah. I think it seems he like he'd want to thank you more than a championship title. I don't know. But you know what? Words go a long way. That's true. Words go a long way. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps getting brighter and darker in it's here. It's really weird. It's like I'm uh, I'm going blind and then I can see. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk to Jack uh, next week about this. Let's do it. All right. Teaser. Teaser. Get ready for next. Oh, uh, speaking of which, just very briefly. Uh, way what one of the best ways I feel like to really encourage a champion, a new champion's momentum, is to have them lose in a non-title match the next night. Can I complain? You about know this? what? I disagree, Steve. Do you think so? I don't think that is the way to go. No, no. I think that having Dolph Ziggler pinned by Jack Swagger on the Raw after him winning, cashing in and winning the title, I think that really cements him as just like a really interesting champion, like I, who I can't defend himself. I don't see where you're getting this from. Well, this well what do you strange. think it is? I I think you know I don't Are know. You, do you think that that c- kills the champion's momentum, Scott? You know, if say that was a title match, he would have lost it already. You know what? That's a really good. I hadn't thought about that. Had it been a title match instead of a non-title match, that title would have changed hands. You know that it's like Miz and Barrett. You know, Miz had the championship right online immediately afterwards, lost it. You know what? I don't think he's credible anymore. No, you know what? I think Wade Barrett is credible. Yeah. But at the same time, Jack Swagger didn't beat Del Rio. Del Rio beat him, and he was so beat up that Del Rio lost afterwards. Yeah, and in the first place, Dolph Ziggler beat up a guy that was completely crippled. Mm -hmm. Barely. Barely. So. Yeah, he barely beat him, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. He almost tapped out to him. I really like skirting the... uh, skirting the description of this show getting from really snarky and like pissy <laughs> about wrestling to having a good time uh m rush says favorite wrestlemania ever and also favorite aliens movie <laughs> what awesome i so let's, i think i peaked on that one yeah probably so favorite wrestlemania ever uh i i, I always go back to wrestlemania 2000 oh was, really yeah it was the first wrestlemania i watched in entirety it was in high school. I was lonely, and I was a little bit high. I watched it alone. I was there with my brother at WrestleMania 2000. Uh huh. The with the uh, um, four way battle royale at the end. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit high on mushrooms in my living room <laughs> when my parents were out of town watching WrestleMania 2000. I borrowed it. I, I got it on a tape from someone at school. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's your favorite. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Okay. Even after all the other ones you've watched, that's the one, WrestleMania 2000. Well, that was the one that really, like, had a, a lot, like, every re- every part of it was super, There was like, a lot hit. of green. There was so much green. Um, I'm trying to think. I think you might have shown me a really cool one. Uh, what was the one that we saw with, I think, was it Rock and Stone Cold when Rock beat Stone Cold? I showed you a couple. The we, one from Seattle. In order I, the one from while. Seattle I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. That's um, 19. Was yeah, for that 2000 one as well. was the one that I really, I think I liked the most. Wow, well, okay. I mean, every other Wrestle, this last WrestleMania. You I, haven't seen a lot of the earlier WrestleManias, too. That's true. I haven't seen four, which I really like, too. Um, wrestle, this last WrestleMania, 29, I really liked. We talked about it. Like, I I want, I need to see it again. I need to see WrestleMania 2000 again to, to be sure if it's my favorite or not. <laughs> Don't do drugs, guys. And if you do, <laughs> do it alone in a safe place like your home. <laughs> with a with a three hour wrestling pay per view to keep you occupied. Yeah, that's. I'm glad I had a three hour wrestling. Event. I ah. remember at one point watching the having the TV off and looking at my reflection in the screen for a little while. <laughs> I, it took me a while to get the actual tape started. I see. Yeah. Uh, the favorite my the favorite one that I ever watched. Uh, because I have attended three. Um, not number three. That'd be, be really fucking old. Um. <laughs> My favorite one that I've ever watched, it changes all the time. And I was I was thinking about it. And I th- I think right now, one that I really really dig is um is twenty three. I watched that one again not too long ago. Yeah. And at the time when I when it was, when it was what was the on and it was live, 
uh, I didn't dig it as much. I'm like, ugh, yeah. It, it was so weird because this is why I was in full fucking smart jaded mode. Like I mm-hmm. hated everything, and it was so great because they even tricked me, and I go like, "Bup, oh, yeah, typical." Even though it wasn't, everything that seemed like on paper was supposed to happen of, oh, this guy's going to win this belt, this guy's going to beat this guy, this is going to happen. None of that shit happened. Like, everything was different. The main event was uh, Cena and Michaels, which was unusual but really great. Undertaker, Batista. Um, Chris, I haven't seen this one. Chris Benoit versus MVP. Uh, Weird. Um Was it Hemi? It was, it was one of the – oh, no, it was Ashley versus um, – I think Trish or somebody. It was, it's it's really really good, uh, and it's got my favorite Boogeyman segment of all time with Boogeyman and Donald Trump backstage. The Battle of the Billionaires match where Vince gets his head shaved. I've not seen this WrestleMania. It's really good. It's my favorite right now. It changes all the time. I think the the main thing is like you want a pay per view where every match blows you away. This is goes back to WrestleMania twenty nine. Is every match you want you want to be exhausted by the end of a pay per view? You don't want to feel sick. That's like how I always feel. Yeah. If I'm not interested in a pay-per-view, I'll just start eating my feelings. You want to have gone on a, you know, to Magic Mountain that day. Yeah. Be a little scared, be a little frightened, laugh a lot, like have a great variety. You don't want to leave feeling like it was a waste of time and why, like, why did you do this? Like, you know, and you want a pay-per-view that makes you think. And like this, I think the last WrestleMania was the one that really I was like, yeah, you get to see S.H.I.E.L.D. kick ass in the first 15 minutes. That's great. Favorite Aliens movie? Aliens. I'm going to have to say Aliens also. Oh, I guess we're talking about the Alien franchise, right? Oh, yeah. This includes uh, uh, Predator versus Alien. Alien versus Predator. Uh, I would say Aliens. PVA. I would say Aliens, and then if we are going to do the subcategory of Predator stuff, probably Predator. I think Predator's pretty flawless. So is Aliens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that covers it. All right. Uh, Prometheus, no. <laughs> you wanted to rewatch it. They're showing it I, on HBO. I really want to. I love that movie, but it's not one of my favorites. Yeah, they're showing it on HBO. I'm letting you know. Thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, you're a sure thing. <laughs> uh, favorite movie with aliens, Scott? Not the uh, franchise. Favorite movie with aliens? Um, that's a stumper. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Like Without aliens, it's like, huh? Killer Clowns from Outer Space is pretty fun. Those are clowns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe The Thing. Oh, yeah. All right. Me too. That's good. Fuck you. <laughs> That's really good. That is really, really good. Well, uh, geez, it's been another packed episode, but I, you know, I I got word recently about something. What's going on? That, you know, Vince McMahon on Twitter. Is he okay? I don't, he's not. He sent, he sent me a DM. A, 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 oh, a, uh, not a, not a direct dungeon, message. Not a dungeon master. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Here is your die. He's he's really pissed. Is he? Yeah, he wanted to. He 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 put. I want a vent. All right, let's uh let's re- let's release the vents. I don't know if we should. Why? He seems really mad. Well, I think look, Vince McMahon being angry. I'm not gonna say it's entertaining, but we need the ratings. We need the ratings. Yeah. What's why? We need people to rate and review us on iTunes. <laughs> Well, we do need that. And every time we have... I'm winking at you. Yeah, every time Vince McMahon... You hear that sound? It sounds like a butthole. It's actually <laughs> Scott's eye opening and closing. Um, oh, stop it. It sounds like a butthole. Stop. <laughs> You're flattering me. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to him. All right. We can call him up. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm dialing. It's ringing. It is about time. Uh, Vince McMahon. It's uh, Steve Sears and Scott Narva from Curtain Jerks. <sighs> My teeth are mashing. Oh, uh, is everything all right, Scott? No, Scott. everything is not all right. Uh, Scott said you sent him a direct message. A direct message. It took me forever to figure out how to do it. Yeah, I have trouble with it also. I tried to get Triple H to help me out with my Twitter, and he, would, uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's doing. Well, he's spitting water on the damn thing short now his phone. We have to get him a new phone. Th- that's because his hand is hurt. He had those cat scans in his arm. He's got oh. like a scaphoid thing in his wrist. Oh, man. Yeah. He's a big old baby is what he is. Ever since he's had all these kids, he turned into a big old puss. I guess a big old family man, huh? Big old family puss man. Puss man. I am upset. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pull focus. Tell me what's going upset. on. What's going on, Mr. McMahon? I have recently gone to the cinema. Uh, the what? The cinema. I finally The movies. Took... The movies. You've uh, been to the movies. I went to the talkies. 
Yeah, the movie. I went to the talking pictures. And now, suddenly, WWE Productions is now makes so much more sense to me. I have to keep it up to date on these sort of things. I don't like to take time off from wrestling, so I decided to take some time off to learn about the movie business since The Call is one of the greatest movies of all time. has been nominated for 14 Oscars. Halle Berry won for it. Of course, as you all know, she's an Academy Award winning actress. Uh, the Call is the movie with Halle Berry? That's right, and Abigail uh, Broccoli. Uh, broccoli? Abigail Broccoli from uh, Little Miss uh, Sunkiss. Sunshine, Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine. Abigail Breslin, Little Miss Sunshine. Academy Award winning actress as well. I don't think she won. Did and she? She, they both won for The Call. Did? And, and the screenplay won as well. Matt Stryker wrote the screenplay. Brilliant screenplay. Uh, was that the screenplay you wrote with you in a hotel room over the weekend? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I'm a ghostwriter. Oh, okay. Uh, we're also currently working on Ghost Rider 3. Sorry, who? Uh, Cody Rhodes. I I would see that in a heartbeat. You're damn right. Well, you see every movie we make because they're that good. Well, there's a plenty I skip. Well, so I went to the local cinema uh, the in movies. Stamford, Connecticut, okay. and I watched a major motion picture. All right. And I am furious. Uh, what film is it? What did you? What'd I you... saw Forty Two. Uh, I'm sorry. Is this the uplifting film about the Brooklyn Dodgers player? Shoe, is it Shoeless, Joe Jack? No, no, it's some some made-up character named Jackie Robinson. Oh, Shoeless Joe is someone else. Sorry. Some made-up, f- fake, bullshit character. I think Jackie Robinson actually was a real character, as in a real person who played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You are not going to fool me, pal. I haven't seen the film, so I don't know the historical accuracy of it. I know very little about baseball and so race relations. You don't relations. know dick. What? You don't know dick. I, about this film, I guess you could say I don't know this film's dick. Yeah, you don't know this film's dick, and I do. I've seen the ins and outs of this dick, and I, I can tell you what. It is phony from beginning to end. Well, I hope you've got a good taste for it. What is? Tell me this about it. This movie is a ripoff of my story. You, the Vince McMahon story? Uh, Vince McMahon and, well, I'll get to that. Harrison Ford is acting like me this entire film. Really? He talks like me. He uses racial slurs like me. He does everything like me. He well, is- I think you just sold me on the movie. I want to see it if Harrison Ford is acting like Vince McMahon. Well, it is not produced by WWE Films, so you will not be seeing this movie. I ain't put a ban on this movie. You imagine and- the to- like, totalitarian 1984 misery palace that this place would be if you were only allowed to see WWE Films? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and by misery, you mean the misery remade without James Caan and Kathy Bates. And of course, instead, in their place, we put Rick Martell and Bull Nakano. Who's who? You switch them. You switch them. He, he sprays arrogance at her legs, oh, and then God. they just shatter. Okay, Jackie Robinson made up. This story is about myself and Kamala. Really? Yes. Okay, well, I brought in Kamala, the Ugandan giant, as the first black, Negro, African, darky, black, American <laughs> wrestler of all time. You know, I don't think that that's what his Hall of Fame plaque says. In all of wrestling, there never existed a darky, black wrestler ever in the world before. And then I brought one, and I said, let's change things up. Let's stop having all the whitey whites in there, and let's have a darky black. You know, Mr. McMahon, I really don't think that's From accurate. From the deepest, darkest bowels of Africa, uh, you know, I, I brought in an African blacky black. Uh, uh, Mr. McMahon, I honestly... And he struck fear because of how black he was. <laughs> Mr. McMahon, that is not... I don't think all that's true. All the white wrestlers said, no way, we don't want to wrestle him because of how black he is, and he's different. And I said, oh, yeah, this is going to change everything because there will be other blacks in the future, gentlemen. There will be a man named Bobby Lashley down the line, and he will be a threatening black man. So you are saying there will be a godfather who is not a Marlon Brando. He will be a pimp and he will be a black man that will wrestle you. So you're saying that you introduced the first African-American. There will be the greatest black wrestler of all time, and he will be a boogeyman. So you're saying that you introduced the first African-American into sports? Yes, of all sports. Baseball is a made-up sport. No one's ever played it in their life. You don't grab a stick and hit a ball. That's made up. So you're saying the the end, uh, the end outcomes are already planned? Yeah, the outcomes are already planned. It is ridiculous. And 42 completely ripped off Vince McMahon and Kamala's story. Well, you know what? You seem I, You almost convinced me that that was appropriate. But I don't know if that's completely accurate. 
Um, Stay tuned for the new WWE film called Whitey White and Blackie Black, starring Vince McMahon and Kamala. I, is it, is it going to be actors portraying you, or are you going to be playing yourself? I'm going to be playing Kamala, <laughs> and Kamala will be playing Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You know what? I would see that. I would see that. You're damn right you're going to see I, it because it's a WWE film. And I don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Van, for uh, illuminating history for us. I you're fired. I don't work for you. Damn it. But thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that was sweet of you. <laughs> Thanks, sister, again. All right, goodbye. Have a good day. Have a better one. Guess my ass. Oh, come on. Jeez, wow. man. I am I got to see 42, and I'd love to see uh, Whitey, Whitey, Blacky, Black, <laughs> Black, whatever it was called. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I'm sold on any movie called that title. You know, so, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it? I was just going to say, like, I guess he can get away with saying that sort of stuff because he's a billionaire and he's—it's a character he plays. It's a character he is plays. Is it or is it, or is it real? really what he believes? Man, that is a huge week for us. Uh, not just the movie Forty Two, but, <laughs> but in theaters now. Yeah. So, uh, uh, wrestling memes. Congratulations to you and a thank you to wrestling memes and to Botchamania for Botchamania and featuring us on their podcast. Check that out. Tweet those guys. Let them know on Facebook and everything that we are grateful and that you liked hearing us on and there. And they're weekly, correct, Scott? They're going to have more episodes coming out? I believe they're having more episodes coming out. I, I don't know the full schedule yet, but uh, it's worth looking into. And, of course, also looking into is the Monday Night Fever Fandango shirt. Mine is already ordered. I got one coming. www.squaredcircle.biz. Pre-order your T-shirt now. WWE is going to have a shit one. You yeah, it's not going to be fun. You're not going to get a. It's they they took the Sin Cara cock T-shirt down, guys. <laughs> That's the proof they're not going to have a great T-shirt. Yeah, you want a good Sin Cara cock T-shirt? You you let you go. Uh, you go to eBay, <laughs> and you let Squared Circle Biz know. You want squared that. Circle Biz. Yeah, Squared Circle Biz. Squared Circle Biz. Squared Circle dot Biz. Okay, you want that cock shirt. <laughs> so for Curtain Jerks, I'm Scott Narver. I'm Steve Sears. Enjoy your wrestling, kids. Scott, what a great show today. One of the best. Always the best. Great bests. If you want to get interactive with Curtain Jerks, which I know you do, Steve. I, absolutely. That would be another great best thing to do. Go to Facebook.com slash Curtain Jerks. Hey, that's a great place to see photos of you with wrestlers and Looking interact with stupid. us. I look stupid. Hey, you look pretty classy. But yeah, get interactive with us. You can talk with us on there. We post matches, photos, videos, all kinds of stuff. Is there another way we can interact with our fans? We can. We can interact with all these jerks at Twitter. Twitter.com slash Curtain Jerks. What a great Twitter handle. We tweet all the time. We, we tweet at breakfast. Tweets. We do live tweets of shows, live tweets of live events. I should wake up for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, you should. You could tweet it. And of course, listening to Curtain Jerks is massively important listen to curtain jerks on comedy podcast network.com stitcher radio and itunes all free rate and review us on itunes it makes oh, a big difference that's to us. huge yes yeah, huge fantastic. it makes us a global phenomenon have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit ComedyPodcastNetwork.com.